it's kind of a blur to think about the last few laps, but I just remember the the lineup changed right after the red flag. Uh, they said we were second, and you know, in my head the whole time I had just preparing for what I was going to choose on the the second row, and I felt like everything I'd studied all week was you know leading me to choose fourth, and um, so I think that was my plan. And then when they said we were second kind of regrouped and just thought about, okay, how can I get a good, good launch here? How can I, you know, get connected with the two? And, um, you know, I was the two Austin gave me a great push, you know, for a lap and a half, really we were locked on. And, um, you know, I felt like that was really good. I felt like it was going to be dead even for a couple laps. And then the outside lane got separated for whatever reason. And, um, they, you know, we got out single file and it was, me, the two, the seven, I think. And they had a little bit of a run down the back stretch where he could have poked out, kind of covered that. And then I knew off of four the energy was going to form again because this package is so draggy as the leader. So you always have, you know, you're always on protection mode and trying to figure out, okay, where's the run going to come from? So as soon as I saw the outside lane starting to, you know, tighten up and gain some momentum, I felt like that was going to be where I needed to go. And the one had a huge run through the little short shoot there coming to the tribal. So I blocked that and, uh, and he cut left and I felt like, man, that was stupid. I shouldn't have blocked that. You know, he just took, just, you know, took the lead and, and I guess he wasn't clear. So, um, I was able to, you know, I guess just get past the line. And I didn't really know at that point whether we were the leader or not, but it's just pretty incredible sequence of events i mean you you just don't know how these races are going to end and you have to try to put yourself in a good spot and i felt like our team did a great job all day just putting ourselves in position and um it's pretty incredible lee spencer sears nascar radio and catchfence.com kind of curious um you came over the radio and you were like in disbelief you couldn't i mean you kept asking did we win it did we win it yeah what at what point did it really start to sink in well, no one told me. So it was like Rudy was crying on the radio. So I was like, dude, like, I hope he's crying for a good reason. But uh, I mean, I guess he was. He was he was a, a ball of uh, emotion there. And uh, so I was still like, did we actually win or not? And uh, and then I think Brandon came on the radio and said, it, you know, that we had we were first or whatever. So um, it still hasn't sunk in yet. So I feel like it's it's just kind of a blur and I feel like there's just so many things that have to go your way to to win a race like this and um it's special I mean this is the this is the biggest race so it's um and stuff happens so fast so it's just it's honestly a chess game that you're just trying to play and I feel like we uh we were able to come out on top and when I saw you earlier, you had like a really light, light lunch. And I was wondering at what point <laughs> were you like starving during that race? Oh, that's me every week. I don't, that's why sometimes I fall out of the seat. So I don't eat enough. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was I wasn't that nervous today. I felt like it just you got to get in the rhythm of the race and just start to execute the, you know, the things that you need to do inside the car. I mean, a lot of the race was saving fuel and, um, you know, we didn't have track position for first half of the, of the stages and we'd be behind. And then at the end of the stages, we, you know, charge to the front once we made our pit stop. So, um, it was a really interesting race for that reason. Cause I felt like I was never at the front consistently, but I would be after the stages and, and, uh, be able to push from there. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll go Dustin and then Bob. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. William, Josh Williams was one of the ones who came to Victory Lane and visited with you and congratulated you. He was telling me that when he first saw you run at Concord, he thought, man, that kid's got a lot of work to do. And then he says, <laughs> look at what he has become. Yeah. Can you take me back to when you first started racing and the notion of what those early days were like compared to you know, you know this, this path to this moment? Yeah, I mean... I've always been really raw throughout my career. You know, I have a lot of like undeveloped talent, I guess you could say. So I feel like speed was always easy for me. Like making lap time by myself was always really easy and came natural, but racing around other cars and managing, you know, all those things is, has been tough, but, um, it's just come over time. You know, I've spent, I've spent half my racing career in the cup series, which is 
crazy, but um, it's just the the way that my career trajectory kind of went. And I think Mr. H always knew that putting me in the Cup Series would allow me to learn the things I needed to learn. And um, you would have been able to see kind of the, the evolution of that with my team over the last year and a half. So, um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, I just think back to the desire I had to compete and race, and that was – unmatched I feel like from anyone else like I wanted it so bad because I never grew up around it but it was something that I always loved and so I think um that's what that desire has kind of always fueled me more than more than anything I just I I want it for no other reason because it's just my passion uh, obviously the you've told the story many times about trick-or-treating at Jimmy's house and, and Jimmy said, you know, he went and reminded you about that the, when he congratulated you. The idea that at one point you were trick-or-treating at, your, at his house and here he is coming up to congratulate you in yeah. victory lane at for the Daytona 500. What What is that like for the eight-year-old kid inside of you? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, I feel like... I've always had a bit of imposter syndrome because I like I race against Jimmy Johnson. I'm like, dude, this guy was my hero. Like literally watched every Sunday, had his die cast cars at my in my room and uh, just dreamed about, you know, what it would be like to be in his shoes. And um, now I get to race against him. And um, it's definitely it's a pretty crazy emotion to go through just getting into the cup series, just honestly being happy to be there and then figuring out, okay, well, how do I, what are my goals? What are the things I want to accomplish? And I feel like I've always had a bit of, um, kind of work through fear, like work because of fear. And I feel like that's fueled me because I, I never want to lose the opportunity to race in the cup series and, uh, have a shot to win races with the team I'm with. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll go to Bob. Uh, Bob How's Parker. business, Bob? It's booming. <laughs> it's booming. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have two teammates who are cup champions. One's the most popular driver. The other is somebody who most people say is one of the world's greatest talents. Do you ever feel kind of lost or not part? Or and does it? I'm the other guy. Yeah, you're the <laughs> other guy. So does and does that bother you at yeah. all? And do you, how many times do you need to win to not be the other guy? Yeah, I I use it all as fuel. So just keep it coming. Uh, all the preseason predictions and everything. But um, I I think it just for me, I just try to I try to stay quietly focused. I feel like for me, I I do well. You know, having my own space and being able to work through the the things with my race team and. Um, you know, I have to kind of balance that kind of calm demeanor with um, working with my team and being vocal enough to to do the things we need to do to get the car better and things like that. But um, I don't know. I don't read too much into it. I'm never going to be the most vocal guy. Uh, I just I just enjoy getting in the race car and putting the helmet on and going to work. That's that's what I've always lived for. All right, we're going to go to Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Um, Rick and Rudy were in here just a minute ago, and they kind of talked about it, and you've mentioned it as well. Why did you have a chip on your shoulder going into this year? Did you feel like people were really were doubting you, or is that just something you were telling yourself to kind of you know push yourself? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'll ever get that chip off my shoulder. I think it's always been there. It's just I'm very quiet about it. But um, I don't know. There's always reasons to, to find. I mean, we didn't win the championship, and, um, you know, we don't get talked about the most and, you know, other people get more, uh, you know, more publicity, things like that. And I feel like I just, whatever I find I use as motivation and it's just the way I've, the way I've always been internally. Um, I don't express that a lot, but it definitely, you know, burns inside. And I feel like that's what fuels your off seasons. A lot of times is just what can I find? What little edge can I find to, to be the best? And, um, there's still tons to learn. I can be a lot, you know, more complete in the car. And I feel like your race craft and things are always evolving and, um, you know, just trying to, to be a better version inside the car with my team. Throughout your career, before you got the cup, you were always kind of considered the can't miss prospect, right? And you've had success almost instantly every step of the way, you know, trucks, Xfinity, you come to cup, you have good solid rookie of the year and yeah. you had success, but you didn't kind of have that major breakthrough year. Was there any part along the journey of 
kind of wondering of if it was going to come, if you're going to have a year like you had last year? For sure. I mean, there's, there's a lot of doubt that creeps in. Um, I feel like it goes back to me wondering if I'm right for the sport because I'm so, I came in in such a different way. And I feel like there's a lot of things that I didn't learn, like going through go-karts and quarter midgets and all those things. And so I kind of wonder sometimes or did wonder like, man, if, am I doing it right? And do I have all the ingredients it takes? And, um, definitely had to just learn kind of just grow a little bit thicker skin to be in the cup series and learn what it takes each week. And, um, I feel like that took time that took probably three, three and a half years to, to really get to that point. And I think some of the people and relationships I had with Chad, you know, he, he enforced that. I felt like he, he kind of brought me to the next level, just seeing how, you know, he operated and how he handled things. All right, Jeff, did you have a question? Okay. Like the outfit looks great. It's the last few hours of this. Um, you know, so many great drivers never win this. I mean, they, they showed a graphic um, earlier where, like, six of the active cup champions right now have not, not won this race. At age 26, is it is it, you know, a nice thing to just get that? <laughs> you're not, you're not going to have to yeah. answer that in 10 years, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so honestly, yeah, that came, that went through my mind uh, in the – I guess after the red flag rolling the caution laps before we chose, I, I just thought to myself, man, I know what just happened. Like huge wreck, like all those things. I felt bad about that. You know, the push, all those things. And, um, I just had to block that out and then think about, man, this might be my only shot to ever win this race. Like literally, like there's a lot of people that never get a chance to line up on the front row with two laps to go. So, um, that, I feel like that motivated me just the, the thought of this might be the only time I get this clean of a chance. And, um, so yeah, I think I might never have a chance to win this race again, honestly. And, um, so I'm going to cherish it for that reason. All right. I'm going to go up to the press box for a minute. Are there any questions in the press box? No questions from the press box. All right. Thank you. We'll come back downstairs. We'll go to Zach and then Noah. Zach Sterney, NASCAR.com. William, congratulations. Um, Thank you. You're the first on this super talented roster to get the Daytona 500 for Hendrick Motorsports. I mean, Jeff Wednesday was saying that um, he really wanted one of you guys to win it this weekend to be able to experience the, the highs of this, right? Mm. What has your experience been like over the last two hours since the checkered flag wave? Have you been able to really Dude, cherish? it's been two hours. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it feels like a dream. I mean, it. I, I haven't really thought about it um in a lot of different ways i mean being in the playoffs all those things but um yeah it's still just kind of setting in i feel like there's so much work it takes to get to this point and um you just cherish those moments with your team and but yeah you definitely want to be the the guy that wins the the big races but any four of us could have won this race honestly we're all up there with a shot to win so it's it's pretty impressive just um a lot of emotions i mean just a lot of just my favorite part was the confetti just because that's what i always remember about the 500 is the confetti shower and uh that part was really cool you know i grew up watching jimmy i think in 06 went in the 500 and that was that's what i remember mm -hmm. all right we'll go to noah gotcha. noah lewis tsj sports uh, William, you know, a lot of champions, Daytona 500 champions, after the race, they, they say that sometimes they have a moment prior to the race or on race day of the 500 where they just feel calm or, or there's something that kind of sticks out to them. Um, and then they win the Daytona 500 in that day. Was there anything for you today that kind of stuck out to you prior to the race or was it business as usual? Um, there's a lot, man. I mean, I don't. I mean, I just remember, so my dad, you know, went home, he was feeling really sick and, um, we had a group text with my mom and I, I said back to him, like, don't worry about it. We'll celebrate when we get home. And I mean, I, I didn't feel nervous before this race. I, I don't know why, but, um, I just felt like, I don't know. It just felt, it felt like a good day, but I n never thought we were going to win. I mean, I never, I never thought that far ahead. I just thought, man, Maybe we'll finish on the lead lap. We've <laughs> we've never done that. So it was honestly just starting small and just thinking about the process and the things it takes to win. 
and you, you talk about that never finishing on the lead lap and I apologize if you already addressed this but you know this place this race specifically this place has been good to you but this race specifically has not been um so what what is it like to just kind of put all that behind you the the dnfs the the crashes and, and not finishing on the lead lap yeah it's awesome i mean you guys don't have to mention it at media day ever again <laughs> so there's a new storyline um yeah, I've never finished better than 21st, I think, which is crazy. I mean, we've we've won some drafting track, you know, races with if you put Atlanta in that category, um, you know, one here. So it's just a matter of getting to the end. I mean, it's just I knew we had the ingredients and the the knowledge to win it. My spotter is amazing, Brandon. Um, you know, I, I feel like I make the right moves inside the car, the right blocks, but it just you got to get there. And it never I've never saw the white flag, so it's nice now. And what was that conversation like with your dad? Um, I mean, it was great. I think I'm excited to see him when I get back. It's great to have my mom here. You know, she she wasn't at the wins last year, so it's great to uh, to have her here and celebrate it with her. And um, I definitely, you know, be able to see my dad and maybe go to Eddie's place in Charlotte and have a little breakfast. That's our that's our tradition. So we'll probably do that. Mm -hmm. All right, Davy. Davey Siegel with Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Uh, how many unread texts, phone calls? Have you looked at your phone yet? Do I want to know? I don't even know. I just want to talk to my buddies at home and see what they're what they're up to. But, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to burn it down. So we'll see how far it goes. Apparently your mom has guess, your phone. Do you want to give us an yeah. update? There's probably a lot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah. keep Ashley's it keep it unopened. Hand that to me. <laughs> I don't know if Ashley knows it either, but um, there's at least 122. Right? Okay, that's okay. great. Yeah. Um, speaking of Victory Lane, you've been in Daytona Victory Lane before, but it was considerably less quiet, less busy, yeah. not a lot of people. What was it like it's to COVID. pull into Victory Lane today compared to the last time? The last time was COVID. I had a mask on, so no one no one could see my face. But uh, it was weird for sure. Um, that that night was weird, but it still still felt great. You know, first first win that was really special. Uh, my parents were there for that one, and um, that one was really cool. So yeah, I mean this one this one feels different for sure. But it's uh, it's going to take a while to sink in and and just enjoy all the different aspects of it. When everybody was running out on the front stretch grass, who was the first person you saw? I feel like it's always Patton, my <laughs> my Jack or uh, tire carrier. He uh, he's kind of the uh, he's got the mojo in the team. So um, it's probably him and and then a bunch of other guys. So Landon and uh, Rudy and everybody. Yeah, my celebration was pretty weak too. The grass was wet, so I was just sliding around. All right, we'll go to Chris right here behind Davy. Hey, William, uh, Chris Gollum with WNDB. First off, congratulations. Thank um, you. And then I, I wanted to ask, so a minute ago I was talking to Jeff Gordon, and um, we were talking about how special it was for him to see the number 24 win the Daytona 500 again. And he, he talked a bit about how, you know, now you know, this is, um, you know, you're, you're kind of making the number your own and that the fans out there are, are transitioning from, you know, fans who, rooted, who are rooting for Jeff Gordon's number to fans who are rooting for William Byron. That was some stuff that he talked about, and I just wanted to see if I could get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cool. I just try to try to continue to come out of my shell and be myself around race fans. I mean, it's tough. I never grew up, you know, envisioning that I was going to drive the 24 car. So it, um, it definitely, you know, it takes a while to – get comfortable with that but it's um it's just special to have so many fans that you know follow jeff all all of the years of his career and um yeah it's cool to meet a lot of you meet a lot of cool people that that have followed him for for years and thanks, hopefully william. us now yeah thanks william congrats mm -hmm. all right we're gonna go seth jacob and then we'll end with steven go ahead seth hegger kicking tires dot net William, we often hear that this is the Super Bowl of NASCAR and that drivers will give up anything for a 500 win. With your experience, why is that? I don't know. I mean, I think, honestly, I mean, there's two races in our sport that are the biggest. It's Phoenix and, and here. And, um, you know, I feel like this one has its own meeting. It's very intense out there. It's, it takes a lot of things to, to go your way, but there's a lot of skill involved. And um, you can't ever – underestimate what that 
what it takes to to win here so i don't know it's just um it's the biggest race you know of the year and it means a lot all right jacob Jacob's going to win race face digital. Congratulations, William. Thank uh, you. Two for you. First, um, obviously, you came up with Rudy, got separated for a bit when you went to Xfinity, but then you guys were able to come back together on the cup side and mm. have finally kind of kind of meshed again like you did at the beginning. Both of you get your first 500 win tonight. How special is it? Not just that you break through here in the 500, but that you get to do it with somebody like Rudy that you've had such a connection with and worked so well with. Yeah. I feel like the thing, the dynamic that, that between us is we just trust each other. And I feel like that, that bond builds through tough experiences like Martinsville last year and some of the things we've been through in the past and, um, you know, being separated for a few years, you know, trying to figure things out and, uh, get into the cup series and, um, you know, it's just a special bond that we have. And, you know, I feel like he has my back all the time. And, um, you know, I feel like the biggest thing is just working through new challenges. I mean, we're always challenging ourselves to find new things to work on this year. It's the, the short tracks and, um, you know, just kind of continuing to strengthen some of the tracks that we've been pretty good at. So I feel like there's always new things to, to focus on, but this, I know this one was really special to him. I, I didn't know this race meant so much to him, but I, I could tell this week how much it meant, just some of the things he's, he's said over the off season, and um, it's definitely important to him. Little Rockingham, end of 2012, your third Legends car race, I think, ever. You were probably 14 at the time. I stood there that day watching with your dad, and I looked to him and I said, what do I need to know about this kid? And I'll, I'll never forget, he looked at me and goes, he's going to be in Cup someday just straight faced and to sit here and watch you win this race tonight I, I thought back to that memory I mean you said earlier you were really quiet even back then did you have that kind of confidence as everybody else around you did back then would you or would 14 year old William Byron have believed that a moment like tonight was possible yeah not no not at all I mean I think I was just living for the next race and just seeing seeing where things would go and I think uh for me it was you know the goal and the dream was to be in the cup series but I never thought much about that I was just trying to win the next race and trying to continue to you know refine my craft and um I feel like you know it's just yeah it's crazy I mean I didn't I didn't grow up envisioning I'd I'd be here but I I grew up you know watching idols like Jimmy and and uh you know, just dreaming of what it would be like. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. All right, we're going to go Jerry and then Stephen. Go ahead, Jerry. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires that net. I don't know if you collect race cars or anything like that. Is this, some, is this a car that you would want to keep in a collection or maybe get a custom Lego made of it or something? Custom Lego would be great. <laughs> um, <laughs> need to get those guys on board for sure. Um, I... I think, uh, yeah, I'll probably get this die cast for sure. I mean, I, I haven't collected a lot of die casts. I did as a kid, but, um, but yeah, this one will definitely go up, go up somewhere. Um, it'll be, it'll be really cool. What's that? Maybe getting it. I don't know. It's going to be here for a year, I guess. So, um, we'll see. We'll see. I, yeah, that'd be nice. That's a good, that's a good idea. Good thinking. <laughs> I'll work on that. <laughs> All right. We can get a mic to Stephen, please. Right there. Stephen Toronto, CBS Sports. William, I guess I'm going to speak for the people here when I congratulate you on becoming the first gamer to ever win the Daytona 500. Nice. For all the people out there. Yes, indeed. Let's do it. But uh, in all serious note, you know. On the every, computer, like Rick Allen says. Yes. And everyone everyone harps on that. And, yep. uh, you know, there's that thing in the Netflix show where it's like, get off the computer. That's become a meme now. But. Uh, I haven't seen that one. That's yeah. great. Yeah, the uh, NASCAR official uh, X account just posted it. But, um, you know, in seriousness, you know, what do you with what you've accomplished uh, in your racing career and especially with what you've accomplished tonight, uh, what do you tell people who are trying to make it into professional uh, stock car racing or auto racing in general through sim racing or also just anyone trying to 
make it anywhere through esports or whatever who get told you know you're wasting your time this is crap uh don't bother with this you're just playing video games what do you say to yeah that? i mean no matter what you're into it's all about what what gets you up in the morning what is it that you absolutely can't go without and for me that was racing i didn't know that i was going to be a race car driver but um getting in through iRacing and you know being on there i mean i was obsessed like i would go in there every hour of the day and um you know i had to balance it with other things and i felt like you know schoolwork and all all the other things i'd have to balance but you know racing was what always was my passion and um you know if you find something that you love you spend every minute of the day thinking about it thanks William. appreciate mm -hmm. it all right we're gonna take one final question here with matt weaver Matt Weaver, sports not. Uh, I don't think you've addressed it yet, but the um, the caution before the last caution where you guys kind of bounced off each other, uh, what do you recall about that moment, that incident? Yeah, um, not a whole lot, just that I, yeah, I hate that it happened. I mean, it, it um, the 48 and I were working well together on the bottom, and somehow we got shuffled or we moved to the middle, and we started pushing each other up there, and um, he was pushing me in that sequence and the six and the one were kind of snaking all three lanes. And, um, I think just honestly, we got misaligned with our push and, and I got sideways and hooked the six and, um, yeah, I feel really bad about that because I feel like that was, um, you know, things were getting really intense with the pushes and I felt like it was getting to the point where I couldn't handle all the pushes and, you know, you just you just try to get through those, those moments. And, um, but yeah, it's just, I can't believe we didn't have more wrecks throughout the race because we were all pushing each other so hard. And, um, it just takes one kind of misaligned push to, to, especially with, I feel like with our nose, we kind of get off center pretty easily with the, with the shape of it. So it just, just the nature of it.